make several incisions around the stem and peel off the outer leaves downward toward the stem. When peeling off lettuce leaves, be sure to peel them by hand as lettuce picks up metallic flavors easily. Start with the outer leaves. When you need a large amount of lettuce, cut off the stem and hold the head under running water to remove the leaves more easily. Remove the leaves from the stem end with your hands. Wash the leaves gently as they bruise easily. In order to avoid damage to the leaves, hold the stem of the lettuce and peel off the leaves one at a time. Wash the lettuce leaves holding them by the stem ends. Use paper towels to dry the lettuce leaves by gently pressing down on them. Use a spoon to scoop out the seeds and pulp from the center of the squash. Hold the squash down firmly on a cutting board and shave off the skin in a downward motion with a knife. Cut off and discard the stem of the eggplant using a knife. If any of the hard leaves remain at the end of the eggplant, peel them off by hand. First, Prepare cold or ice water to cool the tomatoes after they have been blanched in boiling water. Use a knife to cut out the stem area of each tomato. Cut a cross into the bottom of each tomato. Put the tomatoes in boiling water. Remove them once the skin around the cross-shaped cuts starts to peel away. Submerge the tomatoes in the bowl of cold water to ensure that they don't get overcooked. Peel the tomatoes while they are still submerged in the cold water. Cut the tomatoes horizontally in half and use the end of a spoon to scoop out the seeds if the recipe calls for seeding. Cut the pepper in half lengthwise. Cut off the stem of the pepper. Remove the seeds from inside the pepper. Removing the seeds will improve the texture of the dish. Snap off the stem end of the pea pod and remove any strings by gently pulling them. Fill a saucepan with plenty of water and heat it on the stove. Fill a bowl with cold water to cool the pea pods after they have been blanched. When the water comes to a boil, add salt. Aim for a proportion of 2% salt to water, or a little less than a teaspoon per cup. Put the pea pods into the boiling water and blanch them until they turn a bright green color. Transfer the blanched pea pods to the cold water to cool. Fill a saucepan with plenty of water and heat it on the stove. Fill a bowl with cold water to cool the green beans after they have been blanched. Cut off the stem ends of the green beans and discard. When the water comes to a boil, add salt. Aim for a proportion of 2% salt to water, or a little less than a teaspoon per cup. Put the green beans into the boiling water and blanch them until they turn a bright green color. Transfer the blanched green beans to the cold water to cool. If the cauliflower still has leaves on it, use a knife to slice off the base that the leaves are attached to. Use a knife to cut the cauliflower into individual florets to make it easier to eat. The stalk can be used after peeling off its thick skin. Cut off the florets from the thick stalk and then cut them down to a suitable size for cooking. The main stalk can also be used. Cut off the remains of the floret stems, pare off the thick skin, and then cut into pieces as required. Celery has tough strings that should be removed before use. Carefully peel them off by pulling them toward you. Taking care not to burn yourself, use a dish towel or cloth to hold the potato and peel off the skin while it is still hot. When washing bean sprouts, immerse them in water and remove any debris that floats to the surface. Repeat this process several times. To prevent the bean sprouts from becoming too soggy, use a sieve or colander to thoroughly drain off the water. Removing the roots and any remaining debris from the bean sprouts will improve their flavor when cooked. Cut off and discard the root end of the green onion. First, Cut thin slices off the root end and the top of the onion and discard them. Starting from the end where you cut the slices off, peel the onion using a knife or your hands. Peel it quickly to prevent your eyes from stinging. Peel the ginger by taking off its skin in thin slivers. While you can peel it with a kitchen knife, using the end of a measuring spoon will help you lose less of the ginger with the skin. Start by peeling the outer skin from around the garlic bulb. Break off the cloves one at a time from the central stem. Peel away the thin skin surrounding each clove. When slicing garlic across its length, use a sharp utensil to poke out the green sprout from the center of each slice. After cutting off the root part, Divide the mushrooms into bunches or individual mushrooms as required. Shiitake mushroom stems are hard, so cut them off and discard them. Cut off and discard the mushroom's roots, then remove any dirt or inedible parts. Use your hands to divide the mushrooms into bunches of the required size. Cut lengthwise into the avocado until the blade hits the pit. Then turn the avocado to make a cut all the way around. Hold the avocado in both hands and twist it to divide it into two halves. To remove the pit, Pierce it with the base of the blade, 
Then twist the knife so that the pit pops out of the avocado. Place the sardine so that it lies horizontally. Descale it by scraping a knife along both sides of the body from tail to head. Slice through the base of the sardine's neck and remove the head. With the knife held at an angle, cut off a slightly diagonal section of the sardine's belly from the top to the bottom of the abdomen. Use the knife to scrape out the innards of the sardine from the hole you have just made. Carefully wash out the sardine's abdomen. Use paper towels to thoroughly dry the sardine. This is a special method for filleting sardines. Since their flesh is very tender, they can be filleted by hand. Descale the sardine, remove its head, then cut off a diagonal section of the belly and remove the innards. Wash the sardine carefully after removing its innards. Insert your thumb into the hole you removed the innards from and open the sardine by running your thumb along the backbone. Remove them quickly so that your hands don't warm the fish's body. Using the tips of your fingers, snap the backbone at the base of the tail. Grip the end of the backbone in your fingertips and carefully remove it by pulling it in the direction of the head. Push your thumb deep into the body of the squid and sever the joint that connects the intestines to the body. Pull away the tentacles and intestines, taking care not to puncture the ink sac. Pull out and discard the quill from inside the squid's body. Break the joints between the wings and the body and pull the wings off, along with the surrounding skin. Carefully peel off the rest of the skin, starting from where you remove the wings. Peel off any skin still attached to the wings. Cut just below the eyes to separate the tentacles from the intestines. Discard the intestines. Separate the tentacles and pluck out and discard the hard brown beak from the center. Cut off and discard the suckers from the squid's tentacles. Pour water into a bowl and add about a tablespoon of salt per two cups of water. Put the live clams in the salted water. Cover the bowl with aluminum foil. Make holes in the foil. Then leave the bowl to sit undisturbed in a dark place. Leave the clams to sit for two to three hours and they will release the grit inside their shells. Lay the fillet down, sinew side up. Score along the thick part of the sinew, making shallow incisions along both sides. Turn the fillet over and hold the end of the sinew. Lightly press the sinew with the knife and remove it by pulling gently. Place the chicken with the skin facing up and pierce it a number of times with a fork. Trim off the skin and excess fat from the chicken to make it leaner. Fill a bowl with enough warm water to cover the dried mushrooms. With the stems pointing down, submerge the shiitake mushrooms in the water and cover them with a paper towel. Leave the shiitake mushrooms to soak for around 20 minutes. When the shiitake mushrooms are soft enough to be punctured by a fingernail, remove them from the water. The water retains the flavor of the shiitake mushrooms, so keep it to use in broths or soups. Unwashed rice can have an unpleasant odor of rice bran. Remove this by washing the rice briefly, changing the water as fast as possible. Keep replacing the water and washing the rice until the water is clear. Drain off all the water from the rice to ensure that the amount of water needed to cook it can be accurately measured. To ensure the salt and pepper are distributed evenly, Sprinkle them from 8 inches or so above the dish or ingredients. Slice off the base of the Chinese cabbage. Peel the leaves off one at a time, peeling from the tip of the leaf toward the base. For really fragrant garlic, thinly slice the cloves horizontally. If necessary, remove the green sprout. Remove the pastry from the freezer in advance, but be careful. If you leave it for too long, it will become sticky and hard to work with. Start from the belly and peel off the legs and shell. If you want to retain the tail, leave only the shell beside it. If you want to remove the tail, lightly pinch near the tail joint and pull it off. Cut the pepper in half lengthwise. Remove the seeds and stem from the pepper and discard them. Break the egg into a bowl. Then use a spoon to remove the yolk and transfer it to a separate bowl. Fill a deep saucepan with plenty of water and bring it to a boil. Add just under two teaspoons of salt for every quart of water you are boiling. Lean the pasta against the edges of the pan. You can reduce to moderate heat before doing this if you like. With the water bubbling gently, boil the pasta for the time indicated on the packaging, stirring occasionally. Remove a piece of pasta and use a fingernail to break it. If it is soft on the outside but slightly firm in the center, it is ready to eat. Meat and fat contract at different rates when cooked. This can cause meat to curl if the fat is not scored. Make three or four cuts with the tip of a knife on both sides of the meat, cutting across both the meat and the fat edge. Make small piercing cuts to avoid losing flavor or spoiling the appearance of the meat. Slice off any parts of the mushroom stems that have dirt on them. Using a brush, 
Gently brush off any dirt from the cap of each mushroom. Tenderize tough or fatty meat by pounding it before cooking. Pounding the meat until it has a uniform thickness helps it to cook evenly. Wash the mussels under running water using steel wool or a scrubbing brush to remove any dirt from the shells. A table knife can be used to scrape off any stubborn dirt or stains. If there is algae or other unwanted material trapped in the mouth of the shell, remove it by pulling it sharply. Cut off the roots of the chrysanthemum and wash any dirt off the lower parts in a bowl of water. Rinse the leaves in the bowl of water keeping an eye out for any remaining dirt. Slice off both ends of the kiwi fruit and then peel the skin off lengthwise. Place the garlic on a cutting board and use a wooden spoon to crush it. Soak the dried shrimp in a bowl of water for around 20 minutes. Either cold or warm water is fine. Soak the wood ear mushrooms in a bowl of water for around 15 minutes. Either cold or warm water is fine. Cut off and discard the hard parts. Wash the salt cod thoroughly to remove any dirt or discoloration along with excess salt. Soak for at least half a day in plenty of water, replacing the water regularly. Depending on its saltiness, you may have to soak it for over 24 hours. Soak the porcini mushrooms in warm water for around 20 minutes until they have softened. Tear the chili in half and take out all of the seeds. If any seeds end up in the dish you're making, they'll make it very spicy. Insert the tip of a knife into the gap between the two halves of the shell and pry the scallop open. Use the knife to separate the meat from the bottom half of the shell and lift it out. The black part containing the internal organs of the scallop is edible, but remove it if you prefer. Pull the beard off the scallop and then wash the meat using a knife to scrape it gently. Carefully remove the thin membrane surrounding the meat with a skewer. Rinse the scallop briefly in ice water. Peel the lettuce by starting from the outermost leaves and pulling them downward. To check if the potatoes are ready, pierce one with a knife or skewer. If it passes through easily, they are ready. Put the eggs in a saucepan along with some water. For every cup of water, add one and one quarter teaspoons of rice vinegar or a teaspoon of salt. Place the pan over high heat and boil the egg, rolling it occasionally to ensure that the yolk stays in the center. When the water comes to a boil, turn the heat down low. For soft boiled eggs, boil for an additional five to six minutes. For hard boiled eggs, boil for an additional eight to ten minutes. Cool the eggs under running water. This will prevent them from cooking further and will make them easier to peel. Use a vegetable peeler or kitchen knife to carefully peel the potato, following the contours of its shape. The dark spots or eyes are toxic and should be removed with the peeler or the tip of the knife. Cut off as much of the daikon radish as you require. Use a vegetable peeler to remove the skin of the daikon, peeling along the length of the vegetable. Cut off as much of the daikon radish as you require. A 4-inch piece will make around a cupful of grated daikon. Peel the skin off the piece of daikon you have cut. Place a bowl or dish beneath the grater and grate the daikon. Transfer the grated daikon to a sieve or colander and lightly squeeze off any excess water. This will get the best flavor out of the daikon and prevent it from making other ingredients soggy. Trim about 3 quarters of an inch from the ends of the asparagus spears. Use a vegetable peeler to remove the hard skin from the bottom quarter of each spear of asparagus. Peel carrots lengthwise using a vegetable peeler. Use a vegetable peeler to peel the lotus root lengthwise. Soak the unpeeled baby onions for around 5 minutes in a bowl of warm water. When the skin has become soft, cut off the top and pull the skin off peeling toward the root end. Cut off the root end and discard. Use your fingers to remove the ink sac found amongst the squid's innards. Carefully detach both ends from the rest of the organs. After washing the sweet potato to remove any dirt, cut off the required amount and use a peeler to peel it lengthwise. Sweet potato discolors rapidly, so immediately after cutting, submerge it in water. This will also remove any bitterness. Break an egg into a small dish or bowl taking care not to break the yolk. Heat a little oil in a frying pan over moderate heat. Gently pour in the egg, and when the edges start to turn white, add a little water and put a lid on the frying pan. Cook the egg over low heat until the yolk is cooked as you like it. Eggs cook quickly, even after the heat is turned off, so turn it off a little before the egg is fully cooked for the best results. Cut off the required amount of the Chinese yam and wash it. Remove the skin of the Chinese yam with a vegetable peeler. Wash the beet before slicing off and discarding the ends. Cut the beet into wedges, then peel it with a knife. Submerge the liver in water and use your hands to gently squeeze it. 
Replace the water two to three times and then soak the liver briefly. To minimize unpleasant odors, the chicken liver can also be cut in half before it is washed. Cut off and discard the root end of the leek. Starting where the head meets the body, score across the fish cutting diagonally to avoid the small fin on the side. Make another cut along the length of the backbone. Cut along the sides following the lines of the two long outer fins. Starting at the tail end, cut and lift out the first fillet sliding the knife outward along the bones. Turn the fish around to face you, then cut and lift out the second fillet in the same way. Turn the fish over and repeat the process. You should now have a perfectly filleted flatfish. Hold the bowl at an angle and then whisk, moving the whisk in large circles and keeping it in contact with the bowl. Holding the head of the trout in place, descale it by scraping the tip of a knife along both sides of the body from tail to head. Open the gill flaps and use the knife to sever the connection between the gills and the trout's body. Use the tip of the knife to pull out the gills and discard them. Make an incision along the belly of the fish. Try to make it slightly toward the side that will face down when the trout is served. Remove the trout's innards through the slit. Wash the gutted trout carefully, both inside and out. Dry the trout thoroughly with paper towels. Cut a slice off the top and bottom ends of the orange with a kitchen knife. Use the knife to cut the skin off the orange following the shape of the fruit's flesh. Cut out segments of orange by inserting the knife between the white pith and the flesh. If there are long red sections of root attached, cut them short. Prepare a bowl of cold water to cool the spinach in after blanching it. Bring some water to a boil in a saucepan and add salt equivalent to 2% of the volume of water or just under a teaspoon for every cup. Put the spinach in the saucepan of boiling water, stem end first. Ensure that the spinach is fully submerged and stir so that it blanches evenly. When the spinach turns a bright green color, remove it from the saucepan and submerge it in the cold water. For every cup of water you are boiling, add just under a teaspoon of salt. Cut the ingredients carefully into thin slices of a uniform width. Thin slices are usually cut across the length of the ingredient. Cut the ingredients into thin slices, one and a quarter to two inches long, and one half to three quarters of an inch wide. Stack slices of a thinly sliced ingredient on top of each other and overlap them slightly. Then cut the ingredients lengthwise into long narrow strips. To finally chop an ingredient, first cut it into thin strips. Gather the strips, turn them 90 degrees, and cut them across the other way. Cut long, thin, round ingredients into thin slices crosswise to make thin rings. Cut round ingredients in half lengthwise then cut each half lengthwise to make the required number of wedges. Cut at a slight angle and turn the ingredients slightly after each cut to get irregularly shaped pieces of around the same size. Cut diagonally across the length of long thin ingredients making slices of a uniform thickness. Hold the knife at an angle so that it rests almost flat and cut the ingredient into thin slices. Cut round ingredients evenly crosswise to make round slices. Cut long round ingredients in half lengthwise, then cut them evenly crosswise into semicircles. Cut the ingredients into cubes of equal size. Stack thinly sliced ingredients on top of each other, overlapping them slightly, and cut the ingredients as thin as possible. One sixteenth of an inch is ideal. Cut the ingredients roughly into rectangles around one and a quarter to one and one half inches wide. Cut the ingredients roughly into pieces of about the same size. Don't worry too much about the shape of the pieces. Carefully trim any sharp angular edges off the ingredients to prevent them from becoming too soft when simmered. To julienne a cucumber, first cut it into diagonal slices crosswise. Place the diagonal slices on top of each other, then slice them finely into thin strips. First, cut the length of carrot required for the dish. With the cut end facing down, Thinly slice the piece of carrot. Place the thin slices on top of each other, then finely slice them into narrow strips. Gather the strips of carrot together and chop them finely. Pluck the leaves of parsley from the stems and stack them on top of each other. Starting from one edge, chop the parsley leaves finely before rotating them and repeating. Holding the end of the blade down with your hand, finish by chopping the parsley very finely with small movements of the knife. To julienne a carrot, First, cut off a piece the size you need and place it with the cut end facing down. Trim off one side of the carrot, lay it flat, and then cut it lengthwise into thin slices. Lay the slices on top of each other, overlapping a little. 
and cut them into very narrow strips lengthwise. After peeling the clove of garlic, cut it in half lengthwise and make a number of cuts along the length of each half. Then, turn the clove 90 degrees and make flat horizontal cuts through the middle. Finish by slicing the clove crosswise from end to end. Cut the onion in half lengthwise. Then make a number of cuts along the length of each half. Then, turn the onion 90 degrees and make flat horizontal cuts through the middle. Finish by chopping the onion crosswise from end to end. A large pinch can be held between the thumb and two fingers. Taste the dish and add salt a little at a time to avoid oversalting. Ingredients can be soaked in water for many reasons, such as preventing discoloration, crisping them up, or removing bitterness. Ingredients preserved in salt can be soaked in water or salt water to remove excess salt. The longer you soak the ingredients for, the less salty they will be. Blanching refers to either briefly boiling ingredients or pouring boiling water over them. This refers to heating the oven beforehand in order to ensure that food is cooked at the correct temperature. This refers to the method of passing flour and other powdered ingredients through a sieve to make them finer and remove lumps. This refers to tilting a pan to fully coat its surface in oil, ensuring that all ingredients put into the pan will come into contact with the oil. When cooking food, this refers to the oil having coated all the ingredients being cooked. This refers to cooking ingredients until they have just begun to soften. This refers to sauteing, boiling, washing, or stirring something rapidly, not for longer than a moment or two. A piece of fish should be served with the skin side facing up. And if there is skin along only one edge, it should face away from the diner. When cooking the whole fish, serve it with the head facing left and the belly at the bottom of the plate. This is the technique of shaking the pan to move the ingredients so that they cook evenly. This is when a liquid such as water, sauce, or broth is heated until it boils and begins bubbling strongly. This is when a sauce or broth is brought to a boil and then the heat is either turned off immediately or reduced to low. This refers to letting water in a sauce or broth evaporate. This concentrates the flavor and intensifies the dish's color. The foam that forms on the surface when ingredients simmer can spoil the dish's flavor and should be skimmed off. This refers to tasting the dish and then adding salt, pepper, herbs, or sauces to adjust the flavor as desired. This refers to when the stove is at a high heat setting. On a gas stove, this is when the flames spread over the bottom of the pan. This refers to when the stove is at a medium heat setting. On a gas stove, this is when the flames just touch the pan. This refers to when a stove is at a low heat setting. On a gas stove, this is when the flames are not high enough to touch the pan. Drop some batter into the hot oil. If it sinks to the bottom of the pan and quickly rises to the surface, the oil is at about 325 degrees. Drop some batter into the hot oil. If it only sinks to the middle of the oil before rising to the surface, the oil is at about 350 degrees. When boiling ingredients, adding water lowers the temperature of the water and helps the ingredients to cook better. This refers to leaving ingredients in some sort of seasoning for a period of time in order to absorb its flavor. A drop lid sits on top of ingredients as they simmer. It is often used in Japanese cooking. You can make one from aluminum foil. Fold a piece of foil until it is a little smaller than the diameter of the pan and rest it on top of the ingredients. The drop lid stops broth from escaping and forces it to circulate fully throughout the ingredients. This refers to an amount of water or broth that just covers the ingredients. This refers to an amount of water or broth that fully covers the ingredients being simmered. Rare. A rare steak should release runny red juices when cut. It is red and cool in the center. Medium. Only the very center of a medium steak should still be red and cool. Well done. A well done steak should be cooked all the way through to the center. This method uses a gentle stirring motion to fold air in with egg whites, ensuring that they do not lose their foamy texture. Use a gentle stirring motion so that plenty of air is mixed in with the flour as stirring normally will result in a sticky mixture. Drop a breadcrumb into the hot oil. If it sinks to the bottom of the pan and quickly rises to the surface, the oil is at about 325 degrees. Drop a breadcrumb into the hot oil. If it only sinks to the middle of the oil before rising to the surface, the oil is at about 350 degrees. A pinch is a small amount that can be held between the thumb and index finger. A pinch of salt is used when there is already a lot of salt in the dish 
or if it is better to use only a little. Flour is lightly sprinkled on kneading surfaces and baking trays so that dough does not stick to them. It's best to use the same kind of flour that is in the dough. This refers to allowing cooked ingredients to cool to the point where they are not hot to the touch before chilling them. Freshly baked items that are removed from their containers while still hot can lose their shape, so they are left to cool. This is when the mixture is thick enough to drip slowly off the whisk when it is lifted. This is when the mixture is thick enough to form firm peaks on the surface when the whisk is lifted. If the alcohol in a dish is not cooked off when wine or spirits are added, it will be bitter and taste like alcohol. To prevent this, briefly bring the broth or soup to a boil to cook off any remaining alcohol. Sautéing vegetables causes them to release water, concentrating the richness of their flavor. Adding salt can make vegetables release water more readily, but this is not for seasoning, so only add a very small amount. When making batter, have flour, beaten egg, and breadcrumbs ready. The amount you'll need will vary. To make batter for two servings, use three tablespoons of flour, one egg, and just under a cup of breadcrumbs. Depending on what is to be coated, the amount of batter required will vary, so have the ingredients to make more at hand, just in case. A bain-marie is made by placing a bowl or other container in a saucepan or roasting pan filled with hot water. Since the heat is not directly applied, it reduces the chance that the ingredients will burn and it heats the food gently. Fill a large bowl with ice water and submerge the bottom of a bowl or pan containing ingredients in the water to chill them. This is useful both for cooling down ingredients and as a way to make cream easier to whip. As it is used just to add a little fragrance, only a very small amount is required. For one cake, two or three drops should be sufficient. Both the heat setting and the size of its pan affect a stew's water content which in turn affects its flavor. To make a good stew, you'll need to keep your eye on the heat, stir it so that it does not burn, and add more water or broth if required. Cut the green onion to the required length and then make diagonal slits all the way along it. Turn it over and make slits along the opposite side in the same way. Chop the green onion finely crosswise from end to end. Cut long round ingredients into quarters lengthwise. Then cut them evenly across their lengths to make slices. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get going. Is this a good speed for you? Do you have all the utensils you need? That's it for preparations. Take a look at the example video. Okay, hmm, sorry, excuse me. What was that? Come again? Nice work. Well done. See you again soon. Congratulations, personal trainer cooking. Good morning. Hello. Good evening. Good to see you again. Let's get cooking. Happy New Year. Here's to a new year in the kitchen. Happy birthday. I have a new recipe for you. Select recipes from the menu. It's time for some delicious home cooking. There's a new recipe available. Welcome to Personal Trainer. Cooking. Before we go any further, please adjust my voice to the speed you like. Getting ready. Don't touch the power button. You're ready to start cooking tasty dishes from all over the world. Time's up. Can't decide what to eat?